It might seem a little early for that passage that we typically hear closer to Holy Week, but in my own Lenten reflections, I have been reflecting each week on some of the more minor faces around the passion and crucifixion of Jesus. And of all the characters near the cross, perhaps none is more minor than Simon of Cyrene. There's little we know about him. He's mentioned in a single verse, and then he disappears, relegated to imagination and speculation, if we care at all, that is, to devote further time to him. Yet he is present in all four Gospels, and that rarely happens. So that should get our attention. That's interesting to the point that it should inspire a little detective work. His name is Simon. He's from the city of Cyrene in northern Africa. And that's all we would know about him had not Mark added this footnote. He is the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now evidently Mark's audience knows these men because Mark doesn't use their last name. He doesn't explain who they are. Thus we can assume that they are familiar figures to that early church group of Christians in Rome who were following Jesus' way. Alexander and Rufus. That's interesting as well. But hold on to that thought. We're going to get back to it. Simon comes into the picture of the passion of Christ at a critical moment. Jesus' body has been brutalized by the soldiers. And by now the weight of the cross has become too heavy for him. So the soldiers look around and, and there's Simon a passerby, probably a pilgrim, on his way to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. And they say to him, you, yes, you, get over here and carry his cross. They forced Simon to carry the cross. You know, there's something heroic about the crosses that people choose to carry. A recent college graduate has a mechanical engineering degree and two top shelf job offers in hand and yet he chooses instead to go to Haiti to rebuild homes and schools and water systems. A corporate attorney leaves an established practice and volunteers his expertise to further the work of Habitat for Humanity. A husband and wife doctor team leave their comfortable lifestyle, sell their home to work aboard mercy ships, bringing healing and hope to the world's forgotten poor on the west coast of Africa. All very noble. All crosses chosen. Sometimes you choose the cross. But Simon of Cyrene represents a great company of men and women who at every age are forced to bear the cross they did not choose. And the question is big, where is there to be found meaning in a cross not chosen? Sometimes you choose the cross. Sometimes the cross chooses you. Some of the things that bring challenge and frustration and fear into our lives are predictable and 
we can, by anticipation, lessen their impact and, and, and mitigate our reaction. But some are random and unpredictable. Things can be going along wonderfully when suddenly, without warning, something happens and things come unraveled. The world you were sitting up on top of yesterday has suddenly rolled over and now is sitting on top of you today. Sometimes out of the blue, we find ourselves forced to deal with something we never wanted to deal with. Life forces us to carry some burden that we would never have chosen to carry. And our choice is to carry it or just to descend into the bottomless abyss of despair. Sometimes you choose the cross, sometimes the cross chooses you. There was a dear saint in a former parish of mine who had more than her share of hardship. It was uncanny, the frequency with which things happened to that poor woman. And she used to say to me, Pastor, I know the Bible says God won't give you any more than you can handle, but I think God has me confused with ten other people. But she met each burden with a resilient faith and with a determination to find a blessing in what appeared only to be a curse and then to learn from it in a way that would benefit someone else. Still, I couldn't help but agree with her about the unfairness of it all. But this is our life, isn't it? Sometimes you choose the cross, but sometimes the cross chooses you. I think, for example, of those individuals who find themselves facing a debilitating illness, which certainly they never would have chosen. I think of parents that I have known who find themselves struggling with a child who is mentally ill, uncertain of what to do, knowing that they face a lifetime of difficult decisions and inevitable heartache. Or sometimes we come face to face with some great need, some great suffering and misfortune of another person or persons. And though we would like to look the other way, though it would inconvenience us, in, inconvenience us in no small way and put no small strain on our resources, though it may be a cause that is unpopular and, and, and cause some damage to our reputations, we can't sidestep. We can't pass by on the other side of their need and leave them in it. The point is that many of us will one day be forced to pick up a cross that we would not have chosen for ourselves. Sometimes you choose the cross. Sometimes the cross chooses you. Simon may have been compelled to carry the cross, but Simon himself had decided how it would be carried. The understated way that Simon is presented is Mark's way of saying, saying that Simon's response to a cross not chosen was not, why me? Why was I in the wrong place at the wrong time? The leanness of Mark's words is meant to get our attention and to say this. Simon made that cross not chosen his own. He accepted that cross not chosen as his vocation. And he carried it to the top of the hill. Simon, a person of faith when the sun is shining, remains a person of faith when the bottom falls out. His brief time on the stage sends this clear profession of faith, a profession of faith that I've heard from countless individuals over the years who have been compelled to carry a cross they did not choose. This confession, I know that God will show me how to live as a person of faith and hope and joy 
with this cross that I did not choose, with this cross that has been laid upon me. When such a cross is placed in your life, it first breaks you, and then it breaks you open. It breaks you at that place where you have fantasized about being a constant winner, about being constantly on top, and it shows you that that's just what it is and no more. It's, it's fantasy. But then it breaks your heart open to see the world as it truly is and yet not shrink from it but embrace this broken world. And broken open, you see that there are riches beyond wealth and status that apart from all the stuff that we can accumulate, there is a spiritual center in our lives where true joy and happiness and peace are to be found. And that you need to take on some of this world's pain in order to find your true meaning. And there is, I believe, this further inference of Simon's acceptance of a cross not chosen. Back to Mark's footnote about those two boys. I believe that Mark is saying that Simon's sons followed Jesus' way because they had constantly seen their father accept the cross in his life. It was not a negative in his life, but a positive. In some strange way, this event called out of him resources and powers and capacities and faculties that, that pleasant and prosperous circumstances seldom do. I don't know why it is so, but I do know that the greatest spiritual experiences often come not in the soft palaces of life, but in the wildernesses where the forces of evil and destruction are strong. And I don't know where that truth finds you tonight, but I bear you this witness that my deepest faith in God springs not so much from those periods in my life when everything was going my way, but from those times when the rains descended and the floods came. I can tell you that the times I have felt closest to God have been times when I have stood with people in the loser's circle, broken people, guilty people, grieving people. There is truth in Paul's words to the Corinthians. You heard it earlier. God said to me, my grace is sufficient. My power will be made perfect in your weakness. Sometimes you choose the cross. Sometimes the cross chooses you. How will you carry the cross in your life, the ones you choose and the ones that are laid upon you that you did not choose? This can only be answered in the particulars of your life, which are going to be different than the particulars of my life. One of the most challenging times in my life came after my sister attempted suicide for the third time. Thankfully she didn't succeed and thanks, thankfully she finally then gave up her secrets. Our father, you see, had abused her in a most horrific way from the time she was 10 years of age until she was 17 and ran away from home. And for all those years in all the years since, she had lived with self-loathing. I had just become guardian of our father when this came out, who was declining in health. I had promised that I would oversee his well-being, make sure that his life was comfortable, as comfortable as possible. But with this new revelation from my sister, all I wanted to do was walk away and let him rot in his own juices, alone and friendless, and everyone would have understood if I did. But then Jesus showed up. He showed up to ask me this question. 
how will you carry this cross not chosen? How will you carry the cross in this moment of your life? It was a long time before I could go into my father's presence again, and even longer before I could fully forgive him. But the cross in my life compelled me not only to get my sister the best help that I could, but to see to his safety and well-being. You know, I, I always hesitate to share such a personal story, but it's, it, it, that's my truest connection with the cross not chosen. I could have told you about the white father whose teenage son was murdered by another teen, a black teen, over a pair of tennis shoes. And revenge was in that father's heart, and that's all there was there until Jesus showed up to say, how will you carry this cross not chosen? And the father responded by pleading the court for leniency for the black teen, by forgiving the black teen. And now the father and the black teen go around this country speaking to other teenagers about controlling their anger and, and living as people of integrity. Sometimes you choose the cross. Sometimes the cross chooses you. God beckons us into a new and a better future. A future we make for ourselves and for others too because you know, no cross is a true cross until we use it to bring a blessing into someone else's life. Sometimes that means we won't have any fix but we just come along and we say, I've been where you are. I don't have the answers but I'm going to walk this road with you. And that road is long and hard and sometimes hard to find. It is often a path that takes us where we've never traveled, toward a destination we, have never, we could have never imagined, carrying a cross that we would have never chosen. Yet to travel that road is to discover over and over that the day your life fell apart, is the day you were given a whole new life. The day you found the reason for your life. And the day you let go of stained glass Christianity and embraced stained world Christianity. We navigate that road best and most confidently by faith, by trust, and in the company of the faithful. Dear people of God, trust that road. And above all, trust the cross in your life. Amen.